Hello, my fellow humans. Let's talk. So, last week I wrote a blog post about being a loser. The title was On Being a Loser. And <laughs> it's funny because it is such a title, but I'm actually really proud of myself because I got the courage to actually write it and then not just write it but i actually posted the link to the blog post on my facebook page which hasn't happened in years <sighs> because of my traumas i used to be the person who was really posting a lot because one thing is that I feel like I have something to say and I wanted to be heard and I also had this feeling like I'm on a mission. <laughs> like my whole life I have this sense of being on a mission, like me being on this planet is important for the planet. And this probably contributes to feeling like a loser. <laughs> When I feel like I'm not really on track with this mission, um, yeah. So um, I used to post a lot, and I also started blogging when I was seventeen. And when Facebook came out, I was actually very reluctant to join it. But when I started my eco-friendly accessories business. A friend said to me that it would be really good for my business if I'm on Facebook and that was in 2011, so a long time ago. But I joined and I was social media user for years then and um, I really loved sharing, like the blog was my main home on the internet but I really enjoyed that social media aspect of networking without having to go to the network meetings. And so I posted like every person in the previous decade who was building on business that was mainly online even though I used to make physical products in my previous business, like so much of my self-promotion happened online. So I was in this flow of expressing myself on the internet and being okay with people seeing me. And even at times, because I mean, I was not always okay with it because I have this condition where I desire to be seen and heard and loved and I want people to hear me and feel what is inside of me, like this deep love that I have and also just being a freaking <laughs> full time human being and I want people to connect with this but at the same time when people see me when people watch me it's also as though I want to hide and yeah I had this going on for a long time but I used to um, back in time I used to write blog posts Mainly, it was also for, for the public, but f first it was for me because it's so important for me to write, to get my thoughts on the paper or on the screen so that I can... It's like, you know, when your room is messy, when your home is dirty and you start cleaning and putting things in the place and... Uh, you think in between, like, hmm, where should I put this? Where would be the best place for this? 
this is how I feel when I write, like I put my inner world into order with words and also it's not the same for me when I just write for myself and journal because when I write for public it's like I write for myself but I also write for public what helps me when I write for public I want to make things understandable and I want that when people read my posts that they get what the post is about even though sometimes at the beginning even I don't know but that there is some silver lining in the post mm. <laughs> I'm putting my hands like this now and it came to me like I want them to feel like you know, like you're eating a burger. <laughs> like you get something from it. You will be fed. You will be satisfied after you read my posts. Like this is so important to me. And that's why I try to write in the best way possible. Even though, of course, I'm not like the best writer out there, but it is important to me and through doing this, like writing for myself to express myself and also putting it into coherent sentences, I put the things inside me into order. I clean up my insights and then I feel better and then I release the thing into the world and back in times I used to do this a lot and it, the, I had sometimes this feeling like oh oh my god I'm sharing a bit too much of myself what if people mm, what if it's just too much to, to put out on the internet and then I usually just posted it because I was like oh my god I spent the whole day writing and now I'm not gonna post it and then I was just like, chum, click and let it fly in the world, even though I was a bit afraid of opinions of others. Um, but then at some point after my burnout, I mean, during my burnout, I was still sharing a bit, even though it was much less. And then at some point, I couldn't handle people's opinions anymore. Mm. It was as if all the from the online world and mostly from the offline world, from the physical world, conversations and opinions and all the things like people all the things that people said to me and about me as if they would reach a critical point and I no longer felt safe to share myself on the internet and also not on the physical plane with other people. I only felt safe to share myself with my partner and a few friends that I know that I can be my joyful self with and that also love me when I am in my painful self and I think this was also a very important part of my journey to go into this cave where I was mostly focused on myself and my own own healing there was so much to heal like with this burnout what was like why this happened to me and then the things kept on coming out and there was always another layer to heal um, and it was important for me that I was doing this work and it was good for me to share myself only with those people that I know that love me because because I used to 
and, and there's a part of me that still focuses so much on critics and I wanted to prove myself so much to people and if someone had a negative opinion or something, I wanted to prove myself to them and accomplish things and did the things and save people and <laughs> whatever. It was important for me to share myself only with those people who I know that love me because that's actually what really matters, that you have those people in your life that love you and accept you the way you are and with whom you can share your joy and with whom you can share your pain. So this was important and still like such a big thing that I want to convey to people that this actually is what really matters the most. <laughs> that you have those people and that it's so important that you express it to them and that you appreciate them and that they know you appreciate them so that you have this appreciation that goes both way and you have this inner circle first there's you you are the main authority in your life and then you have around you the circle of those people who you know have your back and you have their backs too and with whom you can be yourself is such an important part of healing because you have to have someone to whom you can express yourself and that listens to you and that loves you. It's such an important part of healing because we were hurt in relationships and we also heal in relationships with other people. <laughs> so much of Personal development stuff is on you, 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 and I definitely focus a lot on myself and doing my inner work and giving myself what I need. But at the same time, if it were only about you, only about that one person that is you, there would be only you on this planet. But there are many of us and it's important that I mean, it's not just important, life is made this way, that we need love and connection to survive. Um, so yeah, um, I shared in my blog post how I am feeling like a loser because I'm 34 and Damn, I thought when I was younger, when I was a teenager or in my early 20s that when I'm over 30, I'm gonna have all the physical things taken care of and that I'm gonna have a super successful business and that I'm gonna have a very positive impact on the world and I'm not there and this is where I get triggered when other people push my buttons <laughs> because I feel not enough in these areas. Um, I feel like I should be further along. So when people say to me, why don't you get a job or <laughs> something like this, I get triggered because I'm frustrated that my business is not doing so well to be fully sustainable to, for me to fully sustain myself and I feel like part of them is right and I feel like I'm not responsible for chasing my dreams and and maybe I'm not <laughs> it's even more frustrating that in my coaching practice I support people in going after their dreams and making money from them for, because I know it's possible <laughs> I know it's possible for you and I, I know if you uh, put yourself to to it you can achieve those dreams but there is such a s struggle when it comes to me and at the same time I know it's possible for me if I put myself to it and do the steps I mean I already had a business that I can see in hindsight when I look 
re retrospectively I, I can say it was successful but back then I was like hustle and grind back then I mean I always felt like I should be further ahead I support people with this and I know that I can achieve it too but there are so much inner struggles I don't want to blame I don't want to be in victim mode and I don't want to avoid responsibility but there is fucking an effect of childhood trauma and being a child of alcoholic and having this fucked up family dynamics growing up in this and PTSD that comes with it this has an effect and low self-esteem when no matter what you achieve and how much proof you have that you're good, that you're smart, that you're intelligent, that people like you, you always feel like, uh, not always, but there's this feeling nagging below that you're just uh, pretending, that uh, you are just playing, that you're actually not that good as other people see you and as though they will find out and they will tell everyone how bad you really are and how much you suck <laughs> so this was so strong in me that at some point I mean in my early 20s I actually handled it quite well and I kept on doing the work and I was also doing a lot of inner work um, but at some point I just couldn't handle this anymore as I said it was as so many things built up that at some point it was just too much and then I couldn't take anymore in I couldn't I couldn't it was like for my nervous system, like having opinions of other people and their eyes on me. It was like, it was like I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it anymore. And then <laughs> like, how can I be successful at business when Actually, one of the most important things in business is that you are able to share yourself with the world, to share your business, to talk about it. So how can I be successful when I feel so deeply insecure about myself that I don't even dare to share myself with other people? So <laughs> that was my thing. And... I don't know, maybe posting these videos on YouTube will also help me a little bit to build myself back up and share myself with people, all kinds of people, and people that might have negative opinions of me. So yeah, in business it is important that you put yourself out there and that you are visible, and this was just so hard for me. and. As I speak in that blog post, I felt as though I need like some real success story on how I achieved something big or how I healed something so that I can then build my coaching practice through it, like see how I did it and you can do it too, I believe in you, <laughs> which is kind of true, but at the same time it was then again like, oh, I managed to work through this or I am doing progress, working through this, but there are still those areas in my life when I suck and I especially suck at not uh, showing up consi consistently. I suck at... Um, I suck at building my business. I don't put enough of work into it. I don't uh, follow through. I don't take action on my intuitive insights. 
and I don't take the action on them because I'm afraid of what will other people think and what will be their reactions or that just nothing is gonna happen, like completely ignore from other people. So then it became this cycle where I felt as though I have to have something amazing and show up with it and draw people in with it. But at the same time, I was afraid of what will people say and as though everyone sees that I'm obviously a loser and then because everyone sees that I'm obviously a loser, I must make something amazing, incredible, like have this incredible story of transformation that then I can put in, I mean put out. And because I hadn't had this amazing story of transformation, I mean, I could definitely write my story in this way and um, I'm planning to uh, put out a post or video of all the amazing transformations that I actually had in those years since my burnout. But since I was not able to really create myself or my story into a story of success that you must look up to and that you can aspire to and want for yourself. Um, you get it. It was just this cycle. Uh, I can't get customers because uh, I don't have this success story that they will aspire to. I can't have this success story because I cannot get customers. I cannot get customers because I'm not really showing up and sharing myself with people. And so on and so on. And there I am at 30 for going back to school. I mean, I already started last year. Now I have a second year of college and I, I went to college because, <laughs> because I felt like I want to and I felt like it's the right thing to do. But also I needed some movement because I was so much at home and doing the healing work and trying to work on my business and doing the work on my business as well but not actually in a way that I would show up powerfully and really put myself out there honestly and um, yes I felt stuck so by going back to school I was again with other people in the physical world in building relationships, being in contact with people that I don't really know with new people and getting my confidence back because I was always good at school. So it was like, oh, thank you, God, I'm still smart. It's not, I didn't lose all my intelligence. Um, but yeah, um, if I'm, I'm going on for quite some time now, like, what's the point of this video? What's the message of this video? What's the message for myself? And hopefully it will be a message for you as well. Is that it's okay. It's okay where I am in life, even though I thought I'm gonna be further along in this area of my life that I'm going to be further along business-wise and positive impact on the world-wise, that even though I'm not there where I wanted to be, I'm still okay. And I want to really believe that the time was not wasted, that all the inner work that I did during those years, <laughs> that this was like, a foundation for all of my life further on that I built a solid foundation and that because of this I grow roots very deeply and I'm gonna be able now to 
<sighs> expand in a sustainable way and that it's okay that my story the way it is it's a perfect gift to the world my life the way it is is perfect it's perfect for me <laughs> because in so many ways it is and it's also perfect for others that that this is how it was meant to be and I want you you watching I want you to also have even though it's sometimes hard but I also want you to feel a little bit of peace with where you're at in your life even if you're not where you wanted to be at this point in life I want us both to feel that we are at the exact spot where it is most best for us to be and like I want this spiritual understanding to feel this spiritual understanding that all is perfect that all is well that this is the point in which you can connect with your power and love yourself and know that just the way you are right now you are of service to the world and that you're so lovable and also that yes you can do the work and change the things you don't like or have the wisdom to know which ones to change and which ones to just make peace with yeah that all is well so yeah that's it <laughs> i love you and if you want to sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching you can do so on my website and there's also the link below for that blog post and also the link for the mental fog remover which is the tool i de developed through the years of journaling for calming down that inner drama and moving forward to take action to get unstuck and it's the tool i still use myself and it helps me every time <laughs> and then i think but why if it's so good why i'm not like big time success story yet but it's step by step inch by inch so thank you so much for watching and i love you and see you in the next one bye bye